The world's most powerful investment bank is a great vampire squid wrapped around the face of humanity, relentlessly jamming its blood funnel into anything that smells like money. That was how, in 2009, Rolling Stone journalist Matt Taibbi famously began the Great American Bubble Machine, his 10,000-word expose on Goldman Sachs and its considerable economic influence at the height of the Great Recession. The vampire squid was an indelible image, and it was textbook Matt Taibbi. If you were like me back then, you loved reading his blistering takedowns of America's worst villains. In 15 years at Rolling Stone and in occasional NBC and MSNBC appearances, Taibbi won lots of fans and awards for skewering anyone who shafted the little guy from K Street to Wall Street. But if you listen to him these days, he's telling a different story. I spent 10 years covering the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis. Um, that was obviously a very serious issue, but. Um, this Twitter file story and what we're looking at now and what we're investigating now, um, I, I don't think there's any comparison. This is by far the most serious thing um, that I've ever looked at, and it's, it's certainly the most grave story that I've ever worked on personally. Yes, the Twitter files, quote unquote. 19 releases of select internal Twitter documents provided to Taibbi and other reporters and activists after the social media site was acquired by tech billionaire Elon Musk, remember him? Which made seemingly explosive claims about the politicized blocking of the Hunter Biden story, as well as allegations that Twitter shadow banned conservative accounts without cause. According to Musk and Taibbi and his reporting colleagues and the Republican House majority, those files show Twitter colluding behind the scenes with feds, NGOs, and, yes, Democrats to silence critics, a new woke McCarthyism through digital censorship. Democrats used to care about protecting First Amendment free speech rights, too. Now it's like, OK, if you're attacking conservatives... And I said this on the House floor. I said, don't think they won't come for you. Oh, the, the, the big tech, big media, the, the cancel culture, they may come for Republicans and conservatives now, but they never, the mob is never satisfied. They will keep coming. But critics say the Twitter files don't come close to making that case, and that they also are a product of questionable journalistic ethics gifted to Taibbi and others by a billionaire with access and a right-wing political agenda, and then rapidly weaponized by conservative media with little regard for the facts. The Republicans have brought in two of Elon Musk's public scribes to release cherry-picked, out-of-context emails and screenshots designed to promote his chosen narrative, Elon Musk's chosen narrative that is now being parroted by the Republicans because the Republicans think that these witnesses will tell a story that's going to help them out politically. Is the Twitter file story as big, as damning, as revealing as its proponents claim. That's what we are going to debate today. Because in some ways, Matt Taibbi has become the man of the moment, with nearly two million Twitter followers, tens of thousands of paid subscribers to his Substack blog, and Republican lawmakers hanging on his every word. The man who used to gleefully heap abuse on the outrage industrial complex on Fox now appears regularly on that very propaganda network he once so wonderfully lampooned. Oh, and that video you saw earlier of Taibbi testifying in last month's Republican-led hearing on the weaponization of the federal government, he says that on that day, the IRS visited his New Jersey home to tell him two years of tax returns had been rejected. We reached out to the IRS, but they say they can't comment on individual cases. So, late last month, Matt Taibbi asked me on Twitter, where else, to invite him on the show to debate the Twitter files and free speech and Elon Musk. Now, I've mocked him in the past for doing PR work for the world's richest man, and he's accused me of being an ardent establishment moralist. Great line. But today, I hope we're going to avoid the name-calling and keep it civil as I put my questions to him. Matt Taibbi, a National Magazine award-winning journalist who runs the Racket News Substack and broke the so-called Twitter file story, uh, joins me now. Matt, thanks so much uh, for coming on the show. Why do you believe these Twitter files are so important? And what should our viewers know about what's in them that they don't know? Just briefly, your top lines. First of all, I never said anything about woke McCarthyism, so do you want to take that back? 
Uh, I didn't put that in quotes. I said a so-called woke McCarthyism. A Jim Jordan has also talked about that, and that was a line into Jim Jordan. But happy to say that you haven't described it as McCarthyism. You've described it, I think, as a digital uh, censorship complex. A digital, sorry, I, industrial. That's a digital McCarthyism, not woke McCarthyism. Okay, digital McCarthyism. We can correct that. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, so you started off as I expected with the whole "what happened to you, man?" routine. Uh, well done. Um, so, yeah, these are, I think the rest of the stories speak for themselves. I don't have to talk about how important or not they are. Um, the audiences are interested in them because of what they show, uh, that there was a, an organized, uh, systematic um, uh, structure in place for the FBI and the DHS uh, to talk not just to Twitter and to forward thousands of moderation requests to companies like Twitter, but also to... Uh, virtually every other social media platform. Uh, this is a, essentially an organized system of uh, quasi-state censorship, and it's alarming. It's a lot more than what we thought was going to be there. And again, people are just looking at what we found. They're, we don't have to uh, make claims about it. They're upset about it because of what they're reading. Well, not everyone's upset, and, and you do make claims, so let's talk about that today. And Matt, we're going to disagree a lot today. You've already started with disagreement, so let's start with some agreement. Should the FBI be wasting so much time and taxpayers' money flagging so many tweets to Twitter? In my view, no. Does the FBI have far too cozy a relationship with social media companies? Yes, I agree. But do your files provide evidence of government censorship? I don't think so. Uh, let's just take the very first example you cited in the very first thread, which went mad viral. You wrote, by 2020, requests from connected actors to delete tweets were routine. One executive would write to another, more to review from the Biden team. The reply would come back, handled. Now, that sounds bad, but aside from the fact that the Biden team was not the government at the time, it turns out that at least three, maybe four of those five tweet URLs uh, that you link to, that they link back to non-consensual nude images of Hunter Biden. Why was it wrong, Matt, for the Biden campaign, not the government at the time, to ask Twitter to enforce its own terms of service against people basically posting revenge porn? Do you understand why people question your credibility on this whole project when you omit such crucial context right from the get-go? First of all, the, the, the reason that's important is because the ordinary person can't just call up Twitter and have something taken off Twitter. If you put something nasty about me on uh, on the on Twitter, I can't just call up Twitter and talk to the government liaison whose name I won't mention on the air and say, hey, can you take care of this and have them take care of that? That doesn't work for the ordinary person. The Biden campaign could do it. Donald Trump could do it. Um, but I can't do it. Can you do it? I don't think so. You didn't answer uh, my question. Why didn't you tell us what were in the URLs? Because it, it sounds much worse than it is. When you discover that actually it was simply a violation of Twitter's terms of service, that these were nude, non-consensual images for Hunter Biden, why not mention that? Did you not know? In which case, no. that's kind of incompetent. Or did you know and you were just hiding it from people? Incompetent? I Are mean, you if you didn't know, if you put MSNBC. up... MSNBC. My Did God, you, know, you got six consecutive years of just screw great. ups on the Russia story. Well, that, well, that was you're predictable. If we're going to do it. predictable, uh, can you answer the question? Did you know what was in the URLs when you posted them? It's a simple question. The URLs. Why didn't what you tell us? I don't need to. Because it's, it's, it's you don't think it's relevant that it's a violation of Twitter's terms of service to have nude pictures of Hunter Biden up? Look, every time they make a request to, to Twitter, they're doing what what you're arguing. They're they're making the the argument. That oh we're not we're not actually asking this isn't censoring this is just the government pointing out that that's what the that. email show that you posted. Right, they don't the, demand but, anything, but, do they? They say, can you can you check if this is in line with your terms of service? And those URLs weren't. So I'm wondering why first, you wouldn't first, mention that. First of all, the government um, I can't even report that yet. All right. The, when they're doing this, it's self-evident what they're doing, and I don't have to make claims about what it is. I can just show you what they're doing. Everybody but you knows. didn't, Matt. That's the problem. You didn't show the world that the Biden campaign asked for nude images. It. You didn't. Other people pointed out what those URLs were. You never did. And it, that's the problem, Matt. There's a lot of omission. Tens of thousands of There's things a lot that, of, I, that, I, that I wrote. Am I, I going to describe every single thing that I, I, mean, I published? That was the first Twitter file and the most viral tweet. Uh, Noam Chomsky, who you know and I know, By the way, we like, which is said, about a subject you guys screwed up. Said one of the. We'll come back to that. 
has said one of the greatest forms of censorship in the media is censorship by omission. You've heard that quote. There's a lot of omission in the Twitter files, a lot you and your colleagues don't tell us. You mentioned in passing, for example, in your very first thread that the Trump White House made requests of Twitter too, i.e. the actual government, not the Biden campaign. But you didn't tell us what those Trump requests were. It took an actual Twitter well, whistleblower. Well, it took an actual Twitter whistleblower in front of Congress to reveal that Trump once demanded Twitter take down a mean tweet about him from the model Chrissy Teigen. Yet you didn't mention that in any of your Twitter files because posts. Because I didn't have that story. I don't have doesn't it. That, doesn't was, that tell you something, that you had the Biden story and not the Trump story, that Elon Musk was giving you one oh, side it, of the story? No, you don't understand. First of all, that first batch of files resulted in the firing of Twitter's uh, general counsel. Um, we didn't. We, we were looking at something uh, on a very short time frame, but we didn't have it. I, I, I went out of my way to report that fact. I was the first person who reported that Donald Trump made requests and had them honored on Twitter. But you, because, but I, you, I, because, because, I, because but you I outlined which ones the Biden team did without giving full context, but you didn't outline which I ones didn't the have Trump. It. This, this well, story, maybe you story. should ask yourself why it is you didn't have it. Let me ask you this: a lot of your own Twitter files reporting shows top Twitter employees they don't struggling. Have it either, by the way, the, the, struggling. The, the, the lower in, count, in Congress didn't have it either. I know, but they she's she's free. she did say under oath and that this actually the, happened. The, so the, you the, can the, accuse her of what you want later. I don't have to accuse her. So it sounds like you are. With, with, out of interest, Matt, the, the, the emails you show show really difficult content moderation decisions. They don't show Twitter rolling over. They show people actually having really interesting discussions, unlike now where Elon Musk just dictates that NPR is state affiliated and it happens overnight. They also show Twitter resisting requests to things that members of Congress have asked them to take down, members of the FBI. So I wonder, how do you call this a censorship industrial complex when Twitter, according to your own files, is saying no a lot of the time? I mean, if it was censorship. They'd have just rolled over every time Agent Chan of the FBI or Congressman Adam Schiff made a demand, but they didn't. I published an explicit tweet which describes Twitter's internal ads policy, where they say publicly, we are going to represent that we make these decisions at our sole discretion. Internally, we are going to act when the U.S. intelligence agency, the U.S. intelligence community, that's the quote, when the U.S. intelligence community determines that uh, an account is linked to a foreign malign threat actor. So they're talking about their two-faced system in the in the, the document. Now, but, yes. But your words, Matt, you say, to their credit, they turned down requests. You say it yourself. Those are your words in the Twitter files. Yeah, they did. But the, the, this is a story that, that has m multiple layers to it. They're, they're, the government is constantly applying pressure to these companies. It starts with a baseline of them not wanting to be engaged at all. With, with the government there, or ha to have a very limited relationship. The, the door gets kicked open when uh, in 2017, particularly in the fall of 2017, when the Senate Intelligence, Intelligence Committee starts leaning on Twitter uh, to endorse uh, their accusations that there had been a substantial number of bots linked to the, Russia's Internet Research Agency. And Essentially, it was made plain to Twitter that they would both uh, be subject to lots of bad press and perhaps increased regulation uh, if they didn't communicate with uh, the Senate Intelligence Committee in the way that they Understood. wanted. But communicating so is not rolling it's, it's, over, Matt. All I'm saying is I don't see the evidence. If I saw over, evidence... It. They, they didn't. They, they, they didn't. They, they didn't. Did. Adam Schiff. They Adam Schiff says take. Did. Adam Schiff says take down a tweet, and they don't, according to your own files. That's uh, Adam, What's Adam I mean, Schiff going to do? Is he is, is he going is he is Adam Schiff the CIA? Is the CIA going to come going to come to Twitter and say so this is a So do you have evidence? So do you have evidence that the CIA demanded a tweet got taken down and they did it immediately? They, I, they ordered, that, I haven't seen it. This, this well, we think it's the CIA. Uh, the, 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 quote unquote other government agencies. We're oh, we know you, that there's. Yeah, oh, you think it's meeting. the CIA? You began the interview saying you don't make claims; it's just evidence. Okay, let's talk about your evidence, Matt. Because wait a minute, as I say, wait a minute. people uh, uh, quote me directly if you're going to do this. Quote me directly. I'm. What am I quoting? You just said this. We think it's the CIA. I said I haven't seen a single Twitter file I where I, the CIA I, 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 I reported, tells I said, Joel uh, Roth uh, to take it down. We showed reports that came through the foreign interference task force. We know it yeah. came through the FBI. We know that's okay. the destination by which it came. But the origin of the document, Understood. we couldn't determine beca because, and there's lots of these, 
We have Understood. hundreds. There are lots of these. And, and, Matt, and they, Twitter and they doesn't deny the that they take stuff down, right? Twitter put out a report in Caroline. And what I, you're going to let me answer the question? Please. Because you're accusing me of getting this wrong. So the, the, these documents, I went out and I, and I talked to every former intelligence person from every agency that I could to try to identify where these documents came from. And I ended up quoting, I think I quoted John Kiriakou and uh, I think one other person is saying that looks about right. Uh, when, because every, the people that I talked to thought that this was probably, um, you know, a CIA document that they thought that it looked like that. It could have been from some other agencies, but I did what I, I put the document up and I said, this is what it looks like. This is what yeah. these people thought it was. Uh, I reported that other people and, talked about OGA. That, 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 that's, that's and I'm the, not, Matt, just to be clear, I'm not disputing that. I'm not disputing any of that. I'm saying there's no evidence that the government is ordering Twitter to take a bunch of stuff down and Twitter's agreeing to everything. Twitter, hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. I'll let you finish. Let me finish. Twitter put out a report in 2021, as you know, which must shut down, a transparency report where they said the government asked us to take stuff down and we took down 40% of what we were asked to take down. They've never denied you know that they take serious? stuff down. Yeah, I think it's serious. It's not, I, think, you know, I think if you were right, it would be 100%. The fact that it's not 100%, no. the majority of stuff they turned down, doesn't tell me there's a censorship complex. I, I, I don't understand how it... I, I just do I think it's serious that they take of... down 40% of stuff? Maybe, but that's not... Nothing you showed suggests... In fact, the agent from the FBI sent emails saying, hey, do you mind taking this... Do you mind looking at this and seeing if it's in line with your terms of service? That is not the police state that I think is being painted by Jim Jordan. By the way, you said about factual inaccuracies, Matt. Let's talk factual inaccuracies. Stanford, you talk a lot about the election integrity project in the Twitter files, mm. which Stanford and the University of Washington founded to monitor attacks on our elections. Um, and... You say some stuff about them that a lot of your critics say is not true, and that affects your credibility. You said the EIP was founded in response to the government dropping its proposal for a disinformation government. Well, there you are. We're quoting you on screen. It wasn't. It was formed two years earlier. Uh, you suggest it was government-funded, even though during the 20 election, 2020 election that you're covering, it wasn't. Uh, you say they labelled 22 million tweets as misinformation in the run-up to the 2020 vote. They didn't. Uh, they, got, they flagged 3,000 election misinformation tweets for labelling, so you were only 21,997,000 off. And you also um, claim the EIP was... Let me finish the question. You can come back in. You also claim the EIP was partnered with the government cybersecurity and infrastructure agency, CISA, to censor Twitter. But you mix up CISA... CISA, a Homeland Security Agency, with the Center for Internet Security, the CIS, which is a non-profit. In fact, you added an A to CIS, I think people can see it there, uh, in brackets uh, to make that false claim. It's just error after error, Matt, on just this one That's topic. Error. But, the other, but the other ones aren't. The, the, no, no, the, 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 the 22 million number came from their own report. Yeah, where did the, it, it came from a report in March twenty. Do you know what the 22 million number is, Matt? Can you tell me? Because we checked. 22 million is the number of tweets about election misinformation that were just that they just mapped. How many tweets were they? The ones they actually flagged to Twitter before the election. 22 million came after the election. It wasn't in the run-up. They flagged 3,000. So you were off by 21 million 997,000. They, 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 they said a lot of things. I I, I I stand by my story. You stand by what story? You stand by 22 million were flagged in the run-up to the election, even though that number came in March 2021, which was after the election. No, that's, this came in their report after the election. Which was about some, to some total of tweets that they counted on the election. What they flagged to Twitter was 2,980 tweets, I believe. So that's nowhere that's near 22 say, million. Come on, no, I've, come I've, on I've, what? You got something wrong. You got CISA wrong. Absolutely. Why did you add A? OK, Matt, why did you add A in square brackets? Do you understand why people worry about... I actually thought that. And why I didn't you fix it? I, I just at. checked the tweet before I came on air. It's been three weeks since it was flagged to you. Why not fix it? Do you not have editors at the racket? I, haven't, I didn't realize that until now. OK, and what about the date? You got the date wrong when it was found. You said it was founded in response to the disinformation board. That was last year. Well, because Stamos is saying in the, in the video that, uh, you know, we were sort of created to fill the gaps. But it, no, no, that's not, that's not what you say in the tweet. That's not what you say in the tweet. You say, SIO was created in 2018. No, no, no. You say, this is what you say, that it would, the EIP was created after the public uproar paused the disinformation board. That's wrong. You need to correct that as well, don't you? After the... Uh, that's what no, your words, you say, to quote you, after public uproar paused the Orwellian disinformation governance board, Stanford created the EIP. That's wrong. 
Well, uh, that's what they say. I, 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 uh, my, well, you my could check, you, could check the... you don't need sources, Matt. You could check the EIP website. It says it was created in 2020. Well, that's the date that I just said. And the, the disinformation board was 2022. Okay. All right, well, then that is an error. Okay, so let's talk about Elon Musk. We talk about Twitter files. Um, you have talked about why you don't want to reveal that he's your source, even though he's basically outed himself as his source. I get that you don't want to reveal your source as you're a journalist, but Barry Weiss has outed him. He's outed himself. What's interesting about Elon Musk is that we checked. You've tweeted over 30 times about Musk since he announced he was going to buy Twitter last April, and not a word of criticism about him in any of those 30-plus tweets. Musk is a billionaire who's been found to have violated labor laws multiple times, including in the past few days. He's attacked labor unions, reportedly fired employees on a Whim, slammed the idea of a wealth tax, told his millions of followers to vote Republican last year, and in response to a right-wing coup against Bolivian leftist president Evo Morales, he tweeted, we'll coup whoever we want. And yet you've been silent on all of that. How did you go, Matt, from being the scourge of Wall Street, the man who called Goldman Sachs the vampire squid, to being unable, unwilling to say anything critical at all about this right-wing reactionary yeah. anti-union billionaire? Hello? Am I still on? Yes, you're still on. How have you, well, I'm just wondering how come you've never criticized Musk despite all that? Look, uh, so I, I, I like Elon Musk. I, I met him. This is part of the calculation when you do, the, do one of these stories. Are they going to give you information that's going to make you look stupid? Do you think their motives are sincere about doing X or Y? Uh, when and, and I didn't. I, I, I thought, I mean, I, I did. I thought his motives were sincere about, about the Twitter files. And I, I admired them. I think he did a tremendous public service in opening the files up. But that doesn't mean I have to agree with him about everything. And Agreed. When I, I agree with you. But you never, you never disagree with him. You've gone silent. People would say that's I'm, access journalism. No. No, I haven't done, I haven't reported anything that, that, that limits my ability to talk about Elon Musk. So will you uh, criticize or, him today? for banning journalists, for working with Modi government to shut down speech, for, you know, being anti-union. You, you can go for it. I'll give you as much time as you like. Would you like to criticize Musk now? No, I don't, I don't particularly want to. Um, I, it, look, okay. I, didn't, I didn't criticize him really before. Uh, and I think that what the Twitter files are uh, is a step in the right direction. Um, but it's the same Twitter that he's running right now. I don't, I don't right disagree now. with him. If you want to ask, I, I think... Understood, Matt. Well, I'll ask you a specific one. Thing. You, you, no, ask you ask specific... no, 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 no. It's not Listen. in bad faith, Matt. Sorry. You say that Twitter... Is. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish my question. You're saying that he's good for Twitter and good for speech. I'm saying he's using Twitter to help one of the most right-wing governments in the world censor speech. I will criticize that. Will you? I have to do... I have to look at the story first. I'm not looking at it now. Hold on, hold on. I, I, I posted the story two weeks ago. You tweeted oh, at me... Invite... I don't watch the Mehdi Hassan show. You do. Actually, you do, because you tweeted at me saying, invite me on the show, and I'll tell you my views. Here you are. No, what you, is your view? I, I on... didn't there watch it is. You, you there it is. Look. Me, so... Yeah, and you said, look, we'll read your words. Why don't you invite me on your show to talk about it, since you're so absolutely sure of what I'll say? You're right. I'm not sure. What is your view on Musk working with Modi to censor speech? I have what to you ask would, him about the particulars about it, but listen, th this came up the first time. Uh, I think it was Twitter files number six when when you said uh, after this, th th this was a big one that we had done about the relationship between Twitter, the FBI, and the DHS. And as that story came out, you were giving me a hard time about tweeting through it. I think was the, was the quote. Essentially, yeah. you said. You don't. So essentially, you're arguing that this information was not in the public interest, that I somehow shouldn't have done this story that I'd worked hard on uh, because Elon Musk tweeted something. You don't think that's no, a banned the journalist? I think if no, hold, hold on, Matt, if you're doing a story about free speech on Twitter and the head of Twitter bans journalists. Yeah, I think most people, by the way, Barry Weiss, your partner in crime on that. You're sorry, your colleague, your reporter. Sorry for that euphemism. Your reporting colleague. She actually did call him out. So it's weird that Barry Weiss had more integrity on that. Some might argue your critics might say than you did. Look, we're running out of time. You don't want to talk about India. That's fine. You can go away and research it. But you volunteered to come on the show to talk about it. I got to ask you about the clip on Joe Rogan. You've seen the clip. Uh, it was play, you know, it was mentioned at Congress. I do want to get your response to it. Can we play the clip of you telling Joe Rogan about how you should deal with sources who give you information? How, let's play that clip. With any kind of journalist, like once once you start getting, you know, handed things, then then you're you've lost. 
You yeah. know what I mean? They have you at that point. And you got to get out of that habit, you know? It's like, or you just never, you can't cross that line. So per your own words, Matt, you crossed that line and Musk has well, you. The, Those the, are your the, words. The hilarity of this coming from MSNBC, which did nothing but vomit up uh, fake Russiagate stories that came straight from the FBI for six consecutive years that you guys still haven't apologized Great. for. Uh, Great. Is, I, I, is I wasn't there in that period, so I've got nothing to apologize. I'm asking you your words. Uh, did you so cross that, a line? That, it's a very that, simple question. That, you can you can what about and deflect. It's a simple question. We played a clip for you. I'm giving you a chance to answer. Did you cross the line? Your words. No, I did not. The, st the stories the stories are self-contained stories that hold up in themselves. Uh, and what what I was talking about in the Joe Rogan story, I was quoting a passage from uh, Seymour Hersh's book, uh, Reporter, when he was talking about when he was given a story by the CIA. Um, about a, an Israeli spy that they had caught. And he was saying something to the lady effect of, I who had always gotten the material was being handed the, the material. So yeah, it, look, it, it sounds bad, but the, this, this stuff is clearly in the public interest. It's real, it's true, and I'm doing the best I can to report it. Um, the, the question is, it, the, the test you always have with your sources is whether or not this stuff is in the public interest and whether it's accurate. And uh, apparently I've gotten like one thing wrong or a few things wrong, but mostly I think this story, these stories are going to hold up over the test of time, unlike your Russiagate so, story. Um, so, so let me ask you this, Matt, and, and you're going to say this is a bad faith question, but let me just be clear. I'm not questioning your work ethic. You keep saying, you, you seem to be offended. You, I'm sure you work very hard. Uh, I was a big fan of yours for many years. I've always admired your writing, uh, and th which is why I have to ask this last question, which you're going to say in bad faith, but I promise it is. It's genuinely for, as a former fan. Uh, you tweeted uh, in response to Jim Jordan, and you started the interview saying, you know, oh, my journey. You have been on a journey for many of us. You said it was an honor. Thank you, Chairman Jim Jordan. It was an honor. A lot of people think that sounded a bit fawning to one of the most right-wing members of Congress. Later, you meet Ted Cruz. I don't think it's calls an honor you, to be invited to, calls, to Congress. Who calls you a true patriot. He calls you a true patriot, and you're all looking very intense in that picture. I wonder, when you met Ted Cruz, did you tell Ted Cruz that how you wrote in 2015 that he has, quote, big doses of Tea Party energy, and in 2018 that he's like an incurable skin condition? Do you understand why, Matt, those people who have read your stuff find it amazing sure, now, the Ted people Cruz, you are? Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz knows what I've written about him over the years. He knows that, I've, uh, that I talked about him as, I described him as uh, having a face like a waterlogged <laughs> Reagan mask sewn together at gunpoint. He knows all that stuff. But he, but, but th that's the point. We don't. Ha this is America. We don't have to agree all the time. I don't have to like them all, but these, these people all the time. They're on this issue. They're giving oxygen to something that I think is important. That I think a lot of people is important. And if he wants to meet me, that's fine. If, if Jim Jordan wants me to come talk in front of Congress, I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to answer questions. If I'm wrong about something, I'm happy to answer that too. But I guess. I guess the, where we the, disagree the idea is that I'm committing some kind of a, a, a capital offense by by testifying in Congress about my own reporting, uh, answering questions uh, factually, and and meeting these people is ridiculous. Uh, I guess it, I guess where we disagree, it, it, it Matt, it is an honor to talk to Congress. It was an honor to talk to Congress, and and I'm and I'm proud that I did that. I mean, not every congressional committee is an honor to appear in front of. I'm pretty sure it wasn't an honor to be invited when people were invited to the House on American was, Activities was, Committee. I mean, this is the point, Matt, the context. We're out of time, sadly, but, but the context but, but, is that, that the Republicans, that, that's exactly the Republicans the are banning, like the like Republicans so are banning books and threatening the press. Ron DeSantis is threatening to get rid of anonymous sources. Again, and you're, you're telling you're us- Again, mentioning something that I didn't write about. How many things I didn't say you wrote about it. Well, exactly, that's the problem, that you seem to think the Democrats, not the Republicans, are a big threat to speech, and I just don't see it. I wish we had more time to get What's into that, Democrats but we spent a, a lot of time. Are you crazy? I mean, I would, you don't think the Democrats are a threat to speech? Have you been paying yes, attention? To yes, I think, I think all politicians are a threat to speech. But in this country, if okay. you think the Republican Party is not the biggest threat to speech, then I don't know what to say to you. Maybe you should log off a bit oh, and go to Florida. That. I, I, we can, I don't, I don't, we'll I don't, have to disagree, I, 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 we'll have to disagree on that. Democrats are I think, worse, I think, but... I think I think the black voter who was arrested uh, in Florida or the woman arrested for taking an abortion pill might not say that Cat Turd 2 being deamplified was the biggest story of the year. But we will have to leave it there, Matt. Thank you for appearing on the show. What, what, uh, appreciate what about your, your Hunter, Hunter Biden story? Appreci that you, appreciate that you your time. Just, uh, I don't Russian think I've ever written about the Hunter Biden story, so maybe you should apologize well, to me for putting, for putting words in my mouth. You said at the beginning I put words. I never said a word about the Hunter Biden story, but we will be right back.